I was finally ready to do it. And putting in my two weeks notice was like terrifying. So I printed out the letter and I had it on my desk for like two or three days. I finally handed it in and I was like shaking the entire time. As soon as I walked out of there on my last day, it was just like super liberating and terrifying at the same time. What is up, my fellow side hustlers? This is your friend and host, Ryan Helms. I want to welcome you to the Hustle to Freedom podcast. I'm part of a small minority that are taking action because we just aren't satisfied with waking up, going to a nine to five job, then coming home only to repeat it again the next day and never make any real progress in life. We're here to create our own path, our own happiness, our own freedom, and we refuse to be just another cog in the machine. Because we have busy lives and limited resources, We can't just throw stuff against the wall and hope that something sticks. We have to play smart and move forward each day with consistent focus and deliberate effort while using only today's best tactics and most efficient tools. We aren't going to sit back and hope for a 3% raise each year. We are building additional income sources that will allow us to create the life we want. We call ourselves Freedom Chasers. And this podcast highlights the journeys of these everyday people who are creating extraordinary side hustles. Welcome to the Hustle to Freedom podcast. In this episode, we are chatting with Chanel Tool about how listening to a podcast episode on SEO took her down a whole new path in life that ultimately led to her quitting her nine to five job and starting her own digital marketing consultancy. Be sure to hang around until the end of this one to get a free course from Chanel on how you can start a freelancing consultancy with a day job. So let's not waste any more time and jump into this conversation with Chanel now. So my name is Chanel Tall and I run a site called hustletostartup.com and I grew up in New Jersey. I lived there for most of my life until I went to high school and then obviously college I ended up getting a ton of student loans in college, which is kind of how I started into this uh, arena of online marketing and blogging and all of that good stuff. But I am an only child and grew up with a single mom. So it was kind of pretty laid back childhood, I guess. There wasn't a lot of uh, sibling rivalries, if you will. But yeah, so grew up in New Jersey. I live in Philadelphia now. And here I am. Cool. So you mentioned the student loans there. So were you trying to like speed up the process of paying those off. So you started dabbling in this kind of online marketing space to try to get some more income or what was, what was the story there? Sure. So I actually had a very long commute to work. I worked for AAA and I was working in their travel agency, which is totally irrelevant. But so my long commute led me to find podcasting and I started listening to Dave Ramsey, who's kind of like some financial guru apparently. And I kind of, his message inspired me a little bit, but I really, what I took away from that was mostly like, hey, there's this thing called podcasting. And so I started diving in and I ended up finding um, Pat Flynn from Smart Passive Income. And I just like listened to every episode I can get my hands on at that point. And this was in 2014, maybe late 2013. And yeah, so he really got me started in this whole arena because he was talking about this thing called SEO. And I was like, what is that? (laughs) So um, I was just reading about that. And then I started learning about it. And at AAA, we weren't doing anything SEO related, which is surprising because it's such a large company. So I went to my manager and I was like, we need to like figure out how to start ranking higher for all of these things and help people find us. And they were like, uh, so I put together like this 16 page proposal and they were like, uh, okay, why don't you go do it? And I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> so then <laughs> I kind of like made an extra job for myself at the company. During that time, I started my own blog about paying off student loans because I wanted to pay them off quicker, as you mentioned. And so that kind of got me into the whole networking with other bloggers and m- meeting people online and just learning more that way. Yeah, no, I, I completely resonate. This That's the sole reason that I kind of got into this whole 
side hustle space as well to make extra money was to pay off student loans and it definitely helps out one one thing that i see is you have a lot of people and there's a lot of people in my audience as well that are kind of in this on this debt free journey right and that's probably why they're here as well but it, it's it amazes me how a lot of people they think the only way to get out of debt is to just save every penny that you have. It never clicks that maybe I should try to find a way to make additional money and I can use that money, to pay it off even quicker. So uh, that's exactly why I started as well. Nice. Yeah, it's actually funny. So when I started the blog, I had no intention of monetizing it. I was actually just like talking about how I was saving more money and paying off my student loans. And as I started getting deeper and deeper into it, I realized that, hey, there is like this thing called side income and like you could make money on the side and pay them off quicker, like you said. So yeah, starting out, I was just trying to save as much and like put all of it towards my student loans. And then as I as I learned, I uh, there's this thing called side hustling. So... <laughs> So what did it look like? So you picked up this new project at work on helping out the company's SEO and you started this blog on the side. When did you start putting in more effort into your blog and what did that look like? Yeah. So, I mean, as soon as I started it, I was kind of running with it. It was just so fascinating to me. So I was like watching my real time stats, like, oh my God, there are four people on my site. <laughs> <laughs> and like every time I sent out an email, I'd check that and just start learning and writing uh, at least once a week. And uh, looking back, those blog posts were pretty bad. But um, yeah, I mean, just from the beginning, it was just like so fascinating. I wanted to learn everything I could. So I was just like, every spare moment I had, I was either listening to Smart Passive Income or reading about um, SEO and online marketing. So yeah, it just kind of started consuming my days. What did your schedule look like during that time? So it wasn't that bad until I started taking on marketing clients. So that was in the beginning of this whole journey. And then um, fast forward a little bit, the paid search guy at AAA left and they were like, cool, you do the organic stuff. Why don't you do paid as well? And I was like, I've never run a search campaign in my entire life. And they're like, you'll figure it out. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I started learning AdWords and getting good at it. And then people like friends and family members started learning what I was doing. And they're like, I need help. I need this. I need that. And so I started picking up clients on the side and that's when my schedule got real crazy. Uh, I was waking up at 3 a.m. and going to bed at like 9 p.m. At, what, like, at the most, the crazy time in my life, that was my schedule. You were waking up at three and, and working before you went to your day job? Yep. I would get like three and a half hours in working on client projects or like learning from courses that I bought. And then I'd jump on the train and the train ride was an hour and wow. so I would be like writing a blog post on the train or like making Photoshop images or something for social media and then get to work until like 4, 430, get back on the train, work for another hour on my stuff. And then I'd like heat up a frozen dinner because I wasn't cooking very much and then work until nine and then go to bed and do it all over again. Yeah, yeah, I can. Uh, that's kind of where where I'm at now. It's a lot of times I'll wake up before work and, and knock out something that I was finishing up maybe the night before and then it's go to work. And then as soon as I get home, it's put the bag down, open the laptop and hop back into it. Yeah, so. it's pretty crazy. But it, in the middle of it, like you don't think it's that intense. But like looking from like now looking back, I'm like, wow, like I still get up at like four, four thirty, but I was doing a lot back then. <laughs> yeah. You started taking on more clients. At, at what point did you actually turn this service into like actual business as opposed to just doing it for a couple friends and families? Yeah, so I had a couple clients. And so through my personal finance student loan blog, I had met a bunch of people in the, the FinCon financial bloggers conference space. And so I started getting more referrals. And at a certain point, I had like three or four clients on top of my day job. So it was a lot. And I recognized that I needed to change something. So I started saving up money. And but when I had about eight months of emergency, like an emergency fund saved up is when I was like, okay, I have no more excuses to not do this full time. Like I just need to take the leap and try it and see what happens. So what was what going through your head if you could like take us back to the day that you decided to like hang it up and quit the day job? What was going through your head at that time? So I had actually planned on quitting like the September before I actually did. So I failed at quitting my job once. I'm actually glad I did because I wasn't fully ready at that point. Like I had like one or two clients, which would have been fine, but 
I don't know, mentally I wasn't prepared. So then come around to June of 2017, about a year and a month ago, I was finally ready to do it. And putting in my two weeks notice was like terrifying. <laughs> like, so I printed out the letter and I had it on my desk for like two or three days. Well, cause I, I was actually giving them like a month, not two weeks, but, um, so I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Like, what if I fail completely? And then I'd have a period of time where I'm like, no, I got this. I got this. Let's do it. Let's do it. And then um, I finally handed it in and I was like shaking the entire time. I was like, uh. <laughs> so it was really, it was scary. But as soon as I walked out of there on my last day, it was just like super liberating and terrifying at the same time. I can't really describe it better than that. What did that first month look like when you were out on your own? Like, did you have like this master plan? You were executing it to a T or was it like, holy crap, now everything's on me and I'm terrified? So it's actually really funny. I, um, I quit. And the time frame actually was in conjunction. Like I was going to Australia for a wedding and I knew I would have to take like two or three weeks off of work. So I was like, why don't I just do it after I quit my job? So I quit. And then like two weeks later, went to Australia, which is intense. And like, I wasn't working as much as I should have been. So it was like, I quit and then I started slacking, but I still had clients. Like I was still getting work done. It just didn't look like what I thought it would look like. But yeah, once I got back, I kind of like jumped in and uh, started reaching out to people who might need help and ended up like, if you put yourself out there, referrals will come. It's just mm -hmm. if you have a network and people who uh, can help you out. So can you elaborate on the type of services that you were providing for these people? Oh, sure. I help with Google AdWords campaigns, SEO and Facebook ads mostly. So one of my clients was my stepdad and he knows nothing about digital marketing. So I kind of forced it on him, but he had no website. He had nothing. He was like, I'm just going to get a billboard. It'll be fine. And I was like, okay, <laughs> we're going to get you a website. So I built him like a simple WordPress website and then we started sending Google AdWords traffic for him. But yeah, so that's a typical client, Google AdWords, Facebook ads. I like going into it, kind of assessing their whole business and seeing what they actually need because some people think they need SEO when in reality they might be doing okay there and they need more paid traffic. So it kind of depends on who it is and what they, what they need at that, that time. Do you focus on like a specific type of client or just anybody that comes your way? Like where, where's your little niche at? So right now I have a lot of financial blogger clients just from the FinCon space. And then like, I'm actually running the Facebook ads for FinCon. So that's like my favorite client at this point. So I'm trying to kind of pivot into the event conference space because it's something I enjoy. It's something I'm good at. But yeah, right now it's mostly like financial services and that kind of thing. How'd you land the uh, conference FinCon, which is a huge conference for those that don't know? How'd you land, land that as a client? So I went to FinCon and I met PT who runs the conference. It was very brief and like I would never have expected him to like reach out. But about a month or two after the conference, he was like, hey, I want to jump on a call and talk about what you can do to help. And so we got on a call and like he was like, cool, let's let's get started. Like I want you to run the Facebook ads. And like I had very little experience at that point, but I must have played it off pretty well. because <laughs> <laughs> It worked. But yeah, so after I got that, I just started learning everything I could about Facebook ads because I don't, had only run like maybe 15 campaigns at that point. So it wasn't like I had a ton of experience. So, but yeah, I mean, now he's been a client for like almost two years, I want to say. So now I'm like pretty much an expert in how I can get him traffic that converts. Mm -hmm. So it's, awesome. it's been a good ride. Yeah. How long after you started this, uh, maybe it was even when it was a side hustle, but when did you actually brand your business as Conversion L? Probably like a couple months before I left my day job, I realized I needed a name and I was like, Oh, I'm good at spotting mistakes and like helping people get conversions and make money. So conversion owl, owls have good eyesight. I don't know. I'm still like, <laughs> I don't know where it came from, but it's sticking for now. <laughs> no, that's awesome. So you were getting clients even before you had branded yourself. I think this is a, a place that a lot of people get stuck on. They think they have to have this like super polished, well-established brand before they even take the first step. And it sounds like you were already, you already had some income before you had even branded yourself in your business as Conversion Owl. Yeah, it, definitely. Uh, I think it's just important just to get started and kind of see where it takes you because if you wait until you have the perfect logo, the perfect brand, the perfect name, you'll never get there. Like it's just not going to happen. So just kind of get started, see what you can do. You might end up hating it in two months and want to pivot and do something else. So why spend all your time up front, like figuring that stuff out when you can just 
kind of dive in and see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. Get out there and validate that you actually, your idea is, can, can generate some actual money and it's it's proven. And then you can worry about all the details, like the logo and, and all that stuff that actually doesn't make any money. <laughs> exactly. So one thing I noticed on your site was that you've been, this being your, your personal blog, not your, your business site. So uh, hustle to startup, is it hustle number two startup? dot com or is it spelled out too? So I have both. It's spelled out too, but I, the other one should redirect to the actual site. Checking it out now to make sure. Yeah, it does. Okay. <laughs> so, I got nervous there for a second. <laughs> hustle to startup uh, dot com. One thing I noticed on there is that you've been, in addition to blog posts and things like that, you've been documenting your journey on there as 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 far as accomplishing your goals and things like that. You think that's had a positive impact on your results to like hold yourself accountable and things like that? Yes, I think that. And this is something I learned from when I was blogging about student loans, putting yourself out there, even if it's just a little bit, like having people know kind of what you're working on really opens up room for you to like bring up those conversations in real in real life with people. Uh, so when I had my student loan blog, I was actually telling people exactly how much money I was in debt and how much I paid off that month. Sometimes I gained debt, like it just happens. So yeah, I mean, back in like early May, I posted about how I wasn't happy anymore with my business. And like that post by itself got more comments and like shares and people reaching out than anything else I've ever posted on that site. So I think it's important to not only keep yourself accountable, but let other people know that, hey, it's not always easy and like we all struggle. So yeah, I think it's it's really good to put yourself out there. Do you have anybody in your personal network that you depend on as like this quote unquote accountability partner? I should. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I have a mastermind group and they kind of help me stay accountable accountable and know what's going on in my life. But other than that, probably not. What can you for those that aren't familiar with the term? Can you uh, in your own words, define what a mastermind group is? Sure. So essentially, it's me and three other uh, women and we get together once a week and talk about kind of our business, our challenges, what is going on in our life. And essentially, you're just like putting yourself out there, like being completely honest and having people give you feedback on maybe something you're struggling with, or they notice that, I don't know, something's going on and they just want to give you some advice. It's like really helpful to just sit in a room and have other people who understand entrepreneurship and side hustling and online business and have them give you advice. So kind of just like everyone getting together and being honest with each other about what's going on. How'd you meet these people? Through FinCon. <laughs> so everything comes back to FinCon at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. How big to like put in perspective, like how big is that conference? Like, do you know how many people go to it? Yeah. So last year it was like, I want to say 1600 people. Okay. And I think they're shooting for like 1800 or 2000 this year. So it's pretty big. And this is all like finance bloggers and per like all in that space. Yeah. And I think it's actually getting to a point where other just like online business owners are recognizing the value of FinCon. So even if they're not in the financial space, like a lot of the sessions are about marketing and just like how to grow your brand online. So I think a lot of people are taking notice that like the community is so good that even if you're not in the financial space, you can you can come to the conference and still get something out of it. And do you tend to a lot of conferences? Do you feel like that's key for kind of developing your network? I do. Yeah. Networking is something that is like, if I didn't network, I would not be where I am. Going to conferences, meeting people, even just a local meetup. Like you just meet so many people that either help you get clients or teach you something new that you might not have known. But yeah, like without FinCon, even not having PT as a client, like just meeting all those people and like having them refer clients to me and learning from them about blogging and online business has just been completely invaluable. I, I couldn't agree more. I think just getting out there and meeting people is huge because I am personally, I feel that in my day to day life, it's hard to find people that are kind of already in my personal network that are aligned with what I want out of life. I feel like I'm not on the same page as most people in my immediate network. So getting out, going to these events and meetups and things like that and surrounding yourself with like minded people is so crucial to to pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone and taking it to the next level. 
Oh, hundred percent. And like most of us, as, even as like side hustlers, like you're sitting there at home by yourself and usually like your spouse, your friends don't understand what goes into like putting together an online business or even just blogging. So having people that understand what you're going through and just get it is really important. Absolutely. So if someone was out there and they kind of wanted to follow a similar path as you, maybe it's starting their own digital marketing agency. Do you call what you have a digital marketing agency? Is that what how you refer to it? Yeah, I go, I, <laughs> I flip flop <laughs> between consultancy and agency or just like, I don't know. Sometimes people just call me a freelancer and I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. The label doesn't really bother me too much, but right. As, as long as, agency. as long as they have money, you're okay. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. So <laughs> if somebody was interested in maybe starting a digital agency, consultancy, uh, freelance, whatever you want to call it, like what would be the, the key steps for getting started in that, in your opinion? I would say learning and knowing a ton about what you're going to be doing. Like you don't have to know everything and you're not going to know everything before you start, but just like kind of understanding what goes into it and kind of model, like look around and see who are the top three people you actually want to be like and kind of model what they're doing. Maybe they talk about their schedule and how they wake up at four in the morning or I don't know, just kind of figuring out if that's really what you want to begin with. And then if it is, go out there and try and find a client that you can get and just use them as a case study. Even if you have to do the work for free, like that case study is going to be so crucial for you to like get new clients and just have the confidence to say, hey, I've done this before and it works. Yeah, so. I think the free work thing is is key. And that's something a lot of people miss is, you know, in the beginning, you may just to get those testimonials and those case studies, you may need to do it for free because you don't have a track record yet. Right. So how do you approach, say, if you wanted to uh, even do something for free, like what's what's your recommendation on how somebody could approach a business, say it's a local business? Like, do you recommend like walking in there, finding their email, phone number or what? I would say do a ton of research on what they're doing and find like three or four different ways that you could potentially help them. Like their website's not mobile friendly. If you know how to do that in WordPress, that's one. If their site takes 15 seconds to load, like maybe you could help them speed it up or, hey, they're not showing up in the Google local search, like just something like that, that like you have a couple different options. So if you walk in and you're like, hey, your website's not mobile friendly and you can't convince them that 80% of people visit their site on mobile, then you have another avenue to go towards. But yeah, I would probably, I don't know, I would try a few different things, maybe email a few, call a few and then uh, mm -hmm. walk in. I mean, if it's, I mean, I'd probably start with somewhere that you know, like if you get your hair cut at some place or like there's a barber shop that, you know, like the guy is just so focused on doing great work that he's not thinking about how people are finding him. Maybe you can uh, reach out and say, hey, here's a couple of options. Like, can I help you out? Maybe I'll get a free haircut or something and then just go from there. Yeah, I think that's that's great advice because it's almost like the icebreaker is already done because you know them, like you've developed some trust just by going to this place and they kind of maybe somewhat know you as a person. So I think that's a great avenue to kind of get the confidence at least to ask people to trust you in, in helping their business. So I think that's awesome. Yeah, much easier than walking into somewhere you've never been in before and being like, hey, I want to help. And they'll be like, who are you? Right, right. <laughs> Because nowadays they've probably been approached by people with similar offers in the past. Oh, yeah. Especially if they haven't put like their privacy settings on their website. They probably get like 20 emails a week. Like, I can get you ranking number one on Google. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. just keep that in mind. Any Anything else jump out as is like a, a key step in, in getting started? So, you mentioned, you know, getting out there and, and really studying and, and figuring out, mastering that, maybe not mastering, but figuring out that topic that you want to focus on um, and then getting out and maybe doing some free work. Anything else jump out at you as maybe some key steps? Yeah, kind of touched on it before with networking, but just go on meetup.com and find a local meetup of like digital marketing people or somebody that wants to learn about how to improve their site on Google. Like anything semi related will get you in touch with people who might know someone that needs your help or might know someone who can help you maybe get a contracting job with a local agency and then you can start there and have a client and not have to do it for free. So yeah. I think just networking and like meeting local people, even if you're in a town that's like 50 miles away from the city, like pick a day, take a half day of work if you can and just like go and make the most of it and meet some people who are like-minded. Yeah, I know I did uh, a similar thing. I got on uh, Google and I just typed 
like done a couple different things, but like Atlanta startup and Atlanta startup events and different things like that. And I just found like all these different monthly events that go on. And then I just started showing up and, you know, this, in the very beginning, I had really nothing. I didn't, I didn't have a business. I didn't have a podcast. I didn't have anything, but I was just going there, meeting people, talking to them about what they were doing. And then, you know, keeping, keeping a log of these different people that I've met and what areas they focus on so that if at any point I could provide them any value, I would definitely reach out to them and, and try to do that and start to cultivate those relationships so that when I got to a point like I'm at now where I do have a business and I do have this podcast, these people could eventually be clients, they could eventually be podcast guests, all this different stuff. So getting out there and just building that network, taking some action. Yeah. And I think a lot of people when they're starting, they think, oh, digital marketing, like I have to do my own digital marketing to clients, but that's not the case. Like you have to start with the stuff that's, as Gary Vee says, not scalable, like start going to one-on-one things, like meeting people for coffee, just start making those relationships and not worrying about putting out your own Facebook ad and like trying to get clients that way, like actually meet people and build relationships. And that's really going to create a strong foundation for you to grow from. So what's been your biggest challenge in your journey so far getting to where you're at now and maybe you're still struggling with it, with it or maybe you've uh, overcame it but what's been that that biggest challenge so far I think the biggest challenge for me is time management at this point so I was going from only having three hours in the morning and like four hours after work to work on my stuff and now I have like all day so it's like oh well, I can just like goof off and like go walk my dog for an hour and a half and like do whatever which is great it's like good to have breaks but at a certain point like I find myself procrastinating things. So I'm trying to get out of that mindset and like recognize that if I'm not sitting at my computer, I could be doing other things. So the YouTube video hole that I go down or (laughs) listening to too many podcasts at once, like I could just be so much more productive with my time if I like actually put together time blocks or something. So I'm trying to work on that right now. Are you are you doing anything currently to try to get better at that? Or are you still trying to figure out what works for you? Yeah. So I mean, I keep going between like putting time blocks on my calendar or like having theme days of like today, I'm just going to work on the blog, but then something will come up like I have clients. So somebody will call or they'll email and it's just it always ends up in a in a rabbit hole down some <laughs> other path. But uh, yeah. It's tough to uh, to stay on track. And that sounds kind of counterintuitive because I was so focused before, but I'm trying to like rein my brain in to uh, stay focused on one thing until it's done. Yeah, I, I know just I took so today's a, a Friday mid morning. It's uh, we started this at 1030 a.m. Eastern U.S. Eastern time. And, you know, typically I'm working during the week and I took these two days off just so I could really focus on a couple projects or actually one big project that I wanted to uh, start and hopefully finish. And like just getting started, I knew that I had the whole day ahead of me yesterday. And I was like, oh, God, where do, where do I even start at? I'm used to having to be like so laser focused because I have like this three hours of time and that's it. And now that I had like the next 14 hours ahead of me, I was like, hmm, I don't even know where to start. So (laughs) I I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. And so like lately, all I've been hearing is from like parents who are like, they have their own business and they have kids. I don't have any kids, but they say as soon as they have a kid, they get like extremely productive because they only have 20 minutes here and there to work on something. So they have to get things done. And I'm like, man, like how do I replicate that into my own life of like creating these false like deadlines and false times of where I can work on something. And like, I don't know, I've been thinking about that a lot because I don't have kids. So that's not an option for me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, I think it's something everybody struggles with. And each person will find something that works better for them. And so I mean, you can't really just take what the next guru says and expect it to completely fit your style and your life. You just have to figure out, try different things, figure out what works for you. So I'm, I'm sure you'll find something that you uh, that works and takes your, your business to the next level soon. Yeah. And I think what's worked the best for me so far is just like getting out of my normal space and like going to a coffee shop and working from there and just like having all those people around me, even though I have my headphones in, like I feel like I get a lot more done there. So I've been starting to do that more often and just like try not to stay in the same place and like change my environment. So hopefully that helps to. Where do you see your business this time next year? Oh boy. Um, (laughs) Well, (laughs) hopefully bigger than it is now. Um, I actually want to have about the same number of clients, but just be able to charge more. So grow my income so that I'm able to not worry about like 
spending money on a plane ticket and like actually take advantage of this lifestyle that I have of not really having a specific place to work or specific person to work with. So honestly, I'm not sure. I would just say I'm trying to go upwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same, same work, but charge more of a premium for your, for your offering. Yeah, exactly. And um, be focused more on like conference and events and stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. So any, any books or software, anything recently that you've just like fell in love with and has really stood out to you that you use in your business or that's helped your business out? Yeah. So at this point, um, the E-Myth revisited. Um, I forget the author's name at this point. I'm drawing a blank, but it's like really eye opening because he talks about like franchising your company, which sounds so out of reach for all of us, but it's more of a, a framework and a mindset of like, putting together, um, Michael Gerber is his name, I think. So putting together like systems and processes so that like, even though you're not hiring someone at this point, when you do, you'll have that already to go so that you can start focusing on the next piece of the puzzle and like start hiring from the easiest tasks and then get up to the point where you can hire like someone to completely take over all of your marketing or sales or anything like that. So it's more of a framework of figuring out how to structure your business for success. Yeah. I know like systematizing things is so important. You may not think you, you will want to outsource a certain activity or something right now, but eventually you're going to get to that point where you're going to want to outsource this, this certain aspect. And for me, it was just recently, very recently the podcast. So outsourcing all the editing, the blog creation, all every, pretty much everything after actually recording the interview and just having a very documented process has made that so much easier because I already had the documents and everything. I just had to sit down with the guy and say, here's how I do it. This is how I want you to do it here. Step by step. And it, it made it, I mean, it, took maybe a hour and a half phone call with him over Zoom and bam, able to outsource that. So yeah, that book is great. And just the concept of systematizing your business for to, to kind of help with outsourcing or uh, bringing on teammates and things like that down the road is, is huge. Yeah, agreed. I uh, I need to go back and reread it again. But yeah, just reading it that first time, my mind was like blown. I was like, wow, this is so obvious, but so not obvious for most people. So yeah. What about any software, any like extensions on Chrome or anything like that that you just you're a huge fan of? So I, I do SEO. I mean, running a blog, you have to kind of think about keyword research. I love the keywords everywhere Chrome extension. Um, essentially, you can put in like if you're just typing something into Google, it'll tell you how many people search that every month. And I think it just pulls from the keyword planner. So it's super helpful because it might not be perfect data, but it's so much easier than being like, oh, I should see how many people search for that. And like go into keyword planner and put it in. And then also if you scroll all the way down to Google, to the bottom of the search results, those last like suggested, like people also search for, it'll give you keyword volume for that too. So it's super helpful to uh, just kind of skip a few steps in the keyword research process. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I'll have to check that one out afterwards because I I haven't heard about that one either, but it sounds like it would really streamline the process around that keyword research. Yeah, it's super helpful. And even when I'm not looking to like write a blog post about something and I'm Googling stuff, I'm like, oh, well, that might be an opportunity because like that many people search for it. Competition looks low. Like, let's check it out. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. So where can people connect with you and, and learn more about uh, yourself? And I know we've mentioned your your personal blog already, but where can they learn more about you and also your your business? Sure. So, um, yeah, the blog hustle to startup dot com. I am on Instagram and Facebook all at hustle to startup. And I actually put together a uh, free email course that I have. So I'm just offering that to your listeners cool. and you can find that at hustle to startup.com slash hustle to freedom. Awesome. A lot of hustle there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Got to keep it in mind. Cool. Awesome. Well, I'll be sure to link up to depending on where you're listening. If you're on your phone, scroll down to the show notes, you'll see links to uh, all of Chanel's sites and her blog and her business. And you also see the link there to her uh, free email course that she just mentioned. If you're on the blog, scroll to the bottom. If you're on YouTube, go look in the description. You'll see some links somewhere, wherever you're at. So Chanel, thanks a a ton for taking some time out of your busy day on this Friday uh, mid-morning now to to chat with us and share your story and your journey and how you got to where you are. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me on. Cool. We'll talk soon. All right. Thanks. And that's a wrap. I hope you all enjoyed that chat with Chanel. 
Be sure to go sign up for your free email course on freelancing with a day job over at Hustle to Startup. That's T O Hustle to Startup.com forward slash hustle. So, Freedom Chasers, if you like these episodes, be sure to go rate and review the podcast in iTunes or in the Apple Podcast app. It would mean a ton to me. Until next time, keep hustling.